everyone and welcome back to my channel. You guys saw the title, you know what it is. We're going to be doing my best of beauty picks for all of 2020. Now in the past the way I've done this is I have categorized everything from high-end to drugstore, foundation, concealer, powder, bronzer, blush, the works, and in every category I gave you guys my best pick of the year. However, this year has been a little weird and I'm going to be honest, I don't do contour, bronzer, blush, highlight, everything every single time I do my makeup like I used to, I've really embraced a much lighter approach to makeup. So instead of doing my favorite in every category, this year I have boiled it down to my top 10 picks across the board in all categories. What do I think are, if you could only pick 10 items out of my entire collection, what is the best in beauty? So if that's something you're into, make sure to keep on watching and please don't forget to subscribe because I upload every other day and that'll be the best way to stay up to date on all the fun stuff I'm posting. So if you want to see my top 10 picks, best of beauty for the entire year, stay tuned. All right, so kicking this off, I am gonna say not all of these products launched this year. Some of them are just new to me this year. Some of them I've been using for longer, but I went through my makeup, my skincare, the works, and I said, what are the products that I'm consistently using either day in and day out, or if I can't use it, I feel like I'm missing out. And that is what I have done today. So I'm gonna start with tools, then work our way into skincare, and then end with makeup. So starting with tools, the first is the fluffy powder brush from Base Blue. I went through all of my brushes and I realized that there are some I use every day, there are some I don't, but this one by far has replaced every massive powder brush in my collection. Uh, not a commission code, but you can get 15% off by using the code BRETT on the Base Blue website. This has in the handle an eyeshadow brush that I'm gonna be honest, I have literally never used, but this is my favorite powder brush because it is so dense and fluffy that it almost feels like I'm using a powder puff without it actually being a powder puff. It holds powder really well, but like it doesn't get everywhere when you shake it out. It washes beautifully and always gets its shape back. The bristles are super soft and it is just all around an amazing powder brush. You guys know I use massive powder brushes every day. I cannot do my makeup without a huge brush. And this has replaced my Baddington brush. This has replaced my Complex Couture brushes. This has replaced my Marc Jacobs brush. This has replaced my Morphe brushes. This is hands down my favorite powder brush of the year. And I can honestly say into next year, this is all I'm going to use. Now, you guys know for a long time I was a Morphe fiend. They were the only eyeshadow brushes that I used this month. I actually picked up quite a few of the Delium tools, starting with a B. So it's Delium with a B. I got the yellow handled brushes and I got, honestly, I got a lot of them. And I love how soft these are. They're in and around the same price point as Morphe. Like this one right here looks and feels like the M433, which is like the brush when people think about Morphe. This is the Delium 776. It is fluffier, it is softer, it blends out smoother, it is better than the Morphe brushes. Nothing against Morphe, I still have several Morphe brushes in my collection. You guys know the E4 has and will remain my favorite blush brush of all time. I love this brush, but when it comes to eyeshadow brushes, the Delium Tools definitely took the cake for me this year. And the last tool is a bit of a pricey one, but it is my Foreo UFO 2. This is a sheet mask applicator that I've done a whole dedicated video on, which I will try to remember to link up above. It is such a good product because it is a 90 second sheet mask application. They've got a whole bunch of different types. So whether you want a hydrating mask, a morning mask, an overnight treatment mask, something for hydration or something for mattification, something for glow, they have them all and they work so well. It warms, it cools, it pulsates, it uses UV therapy. So it's basically making the sheet mask you're doing as potent as humanly possible in like one of those, I'm gonna unplug and detox for 90 seconds. A lot of us don't have time to throw on a sheet mask and then just sit there for 20 minutes like this. This takes the time out to the point where even Brandon uses this. And you guys know how it took me years of pulling and prodding to get him to consistently use skincare. This is one of those items that he will walk up to me and be like, has it been too many, too many days? Can I use the Foreo again? And I'll be like, yeah, go for it. Like you can use it every day if you want to. It's pricey if you do it every day, so I wouldn't recommend it, but you totally can. And then he goes and grabs my phone because my phone's the one linked to the Foreo and then goes and does the mask, which I am honestly so proud of. 
last skincare item. It is in the box just because from a storage perspective, this is the easiest way to store it. But this is the Ogle Lorenzen Red Carpet Facial in a Box. Now it is a multi-step mask. I will link an Instagram post I did where I did a full application of this on camera. It is three steps. So there is the step one peel that you apply, you leave it on. It does sting a little bit. I'll be honest, when I first used it, I thought I got like chemical burns, which honestly are not great, but I didn't. And the next morning my skin just looked glowy, dewy, and super hydrated. In Olga's line, she refers to when that you get that sting as something being spicy. This is definitely spicy. If your skin is super sensitive, I do not recommend this product, but if you use regular exfoliation two to three times a week, you're used to chemical peels, this is an amazing one you can do at home. Uh, after you do the step one, you'll then put on the neutralizer, which also calms down and a little bit of spice when you combine the two, and then you finish it up with a polishing mask, and when you take it off, your skin is gonna look a little red and a little worse for wear, but once you rinse that off and go to sleep, you wake up the next morning, your skin will glowy, dewy, refreshed, hydrated, smooth. It just feels so good. I am excited because I haven't done it in like three weeks, so I will be doing it again tonight. Last night, Brandon asked me to do it, and I was like, I really, I really don't want to tonight because I had to shave and film and I was just tired. So we're doing it tonight, and I cannot wait. All right, and now I do have six makeup picks that I'm going to talk about in the order I discovered them, not in any other order, because some of these products I have been using for several years. The first is gonna be the Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray. I have gone back and forth using this finishing spray and other ones, and every time I come back to this one, I remember how much I loved it. A little bit goes such a long way. It locks everything in. After I put it on, I do grab a little sponge and just pat everything in, and it just melts everything into the skin, locks it in all day, and it even keeps my oil and shine at bay. My skin looks glowy, dewy, and healthy without looking like a zombie, which is amazing. More importantly, my makeup used to cake up around my nose. It would break apart in my under eyes. Obviously, yes, I do have a little bit of lines down here, and makeup settles into lines. Think about it as makeup is pigment. It doesn't cover texture. So if you, you know, paint it over your hand, you would see where your fingers end. That's gonna happen if you have creases. There's really nothing about that shy of smoothing silicone over it. This will help everything else to hide that texture, especially when I spray a little bit on my sponge before I blend out any foundation, tinted moisturizer, concealer, or anything. For some reason, it just makes it look so much more beautiful. Next, I do have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finishing Powder. Now, I have it in two shades because I did get a little sample one. This is in the shade medium two. This is the third or fourth of these that I've gone through. Such a beautiful powder. What I like to do with this is I will set my face with a loose powder. Then I'll take a little bit of this and I will just target that in the center of the face. And then I will just sweep it on my under eye and over the cheek. And it just melts everything together and helps everything to look extra flawless. The lighter one, this is in the shade two. I do have a baby, baby, baby one in the shade one, which is their lightest shade. And I have this so I could take a tiny bit of my brush and just lightly hit up the under eye because do you see how that instantly just brightened everything under there? You don't need a lot and because it's technically a finishing powder, it is not gonna brighten so much that it looks like you caked on pigment or you're gonna get that white under eye, but putting a tiny bit right here and a little bit on the outer portion will just help to lift and sculpt the eye a little bit better Plus, it has these like silk fibers in there that do blur and smooth everything. So for under eyes, pores on the nose, texture on the cheeks, this is an amazing powder for kind of gliding over everything. What I tend to do, if I find I've gone in with a little bit too much blush or a little bit too much highlight, I will take a tiny bit of this powder on either my base blue brush or the brush I was just using from Sigma and just lightly pat it out. And I find that that just softens everything, veils over the powder so that it doesn't look quite as intense and makes everything just look so much more like my skin. Next, you guys know the brow product to end all other brow products. This is the Milk Kush Fiber Brow. I wear it in the shade Dutch. It is the easiest brow I've ever done. I comb it through my brows and call it a day. And if I have a place where I'm a little sparse, I will take a tiny bit of this on the tip of an angled brush, run it through my brow, and I'm done. I can take a clean spoolie and just brush it out a little if I want more of a fluffy brow. 
but that's all I have in my brows today. I like my brows looking a little more natural. I personally don't love the carved, sculpted Instagram brow, especially on me. So this has definitely become and stayed for nearly three years the brow product of my life. Next, from Beauty For Real, this is the MVP Perfect and Protect Tinted Moisturizer and Concealer. Hands down, if I had to talk about all of the products this year that I have tried, this would be the number one winner, hands down. I have gone through a lot of foundations in my day. I've gone through a lot of concealers in my day. I used to hate tinted moisturizer. This is my favorite complexion product to the point where I could probably count a dozen times this year that I didn't use this. Every other time, this is what I used. This is a fairly new tube. I opened it about three days ago, so new tube. It comes with a full coverage concealer in the cap that is made to be a brightening concealer to go with the tinted moisturizer. So it is a two-in-one tinted moisturizer and concealer, but it also has SPF 25 and a built-in primer and hyaluronic acid. So this is your primer, your moisturizer, your uh, sunscreen, as well as your concealer and your foundation. It is five in one. You can use the code BFRBRET10 for 10% off. No, it is not a commission code. It is strictly discount. I'm not getting paid to say this. I just love this product. It is so forgiving. There are only six shades. I wear the shade medium one and there is no line of demarcation. This is my color. I can use fair one if I really, really need to. It's a little light for me. Medium two is a little dark for me. So I do find that if you are on the spectrum of light to dark, there is a color for everyone. Their darkest color fits deepest skins. What I will say is I think their lightest could go lighter. Like I know one person who is too fair for this, but other than that, the range is super forgiving. Leslie, the CEO of Beauty For Real, is a professional makeup artist, celebrity makeup artist, and she formulated this because she was doing athletes, Venus and Serena Williams, Dwayne Wade. She's done Gabriella Union, uh, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, Leo DiCaprio. Like she has done major celebrities who had to look flawless on uh, magazine covers, TV appearances, red carpet, film, commercial, the works. And these are the products she formulated to make sure that they look perfect, whether you're starting to film or end, which for me, like that realization that we all need that kind of longevity in our makeup, which is why I love this formula so much. Hydrates and does everything you need it to do without getting cakey or overly done. And if you feel like it doesn't look perfect, you grab a wet sponge at any point and just pat it out and it brings it back to life and you are good to go. While I'm on the, oh my God, I love beauty for all train, I'm gonna talk about the high def mascara. Also a ride or die product that I discovered this year. This replaced Roller Lash as my favorite mascara of all time. The wand is tiny, so it really gets into every single lash hair. It doesn't smudge, it doesn't cake, it doesn't flake. It gives you nice, long, wispy lashes without them looking cakey or spidery. I love this mascara, and I am wearing it today under my falsies because it has just enough tack to it that when you apply a falsie and you just kind of pinch them together, it makes your lashes and your fake lashes melt together to look like they are all your lashes. Like I know obviously these are false lashes and they don't look as natural as it would be if I just put on mascara, but honestly, like that's my vibe. I like wearing a falsie and even when I don't, this mascara is enough. I have on more than one occasion in the past few weeks done a video where I said, I'm gonna go put on a lash and I'll come back with just the mascara on. 99% of the time it is this one. And I say, I'm skipping the lashes cause I don't need it today. That never happened until I discovered this product. And the last item I'm gonna talk about is a newer discovery for me. It has been in my collection for almost a year, if not longer, and I only recently started using it and I'm obsessed. This is the Natasha Denona Bloom Blush and Glow Palette. It is two cream, cream blush, cream highlighter, and then powder, blush, highlight topper, and highlighter. I am wearing it on the cheeks today. I think it is such a beautiful shade. For literally anyone, this is deep enough that you can get a beautiful, deeper complexion blush. And I'm wearing it today sheared out where it looks like a just pretty, flattering, blushy tone. I got this in a BoxyCharm box a very long time ago, used it once or twice. I'll be honest, I didn't even swatch this color because I was like, ah, whatever, it's too dark for me. And I don't like cream highlighter, so I'd skip this. And I'm not gonna keep a palette in front of me for just one or two shades. So I put it into my collection. I attended a Boxy Charm Masterclass hosted by Natasha Denona where she used this and her complexion is not that far off from mine. She used this and I was instantly like obsessed with what she had done. 
I grabbed a sponge on the spot and started doing it and playing around. And this has become my go-to for blush and highlight ever since. I think it's beautiful. It works even on top of powder. It applies so nicely. I'm gonna take a brush and add a tiny bit more of the blush topper right here, just to the cheeks to add a tiny bit more glow. Because why not? We can always use a little more glow. But it just gives you this beautiful lit from within effect. And even on top of powder, even the creams work beautifully. So if you haven't picked this up, I would definitely recommend it with all of the other products that I spoke about today. It is a little pricey, but honestly, I could not see myself doing my makeup without it anymore. I have basically stopped using any other blushes. I mentioned it on Instagram, which if you're not following me, Brett Guy Glam over on Instagram. I recently de-stashed and decluttered my area where I film. I used to have like five blushes, six bronzers, nine foundations in front of me at all times. I downsized. Looking in front of me, that is the only blush product here. I have two bronzers, I have three highlighters, but that palette is the only blush in arm's reach of me right now, which is typically what I use when I film. I grab whatever I like. I've gotten myself down to two foundations in front of me, and this is basically the only one I end up using. So if you made it all the way to the end, thank you very much. This has been my top 10 picks of 2020, the best of beauty products that I think ride or die you should not sleep on. If you have a chance to try them out, I definitely recommend it. As always, let me know what some of your recommendations are down below because I love hearing what you guys are loving. That is a way I kind of figure out what I want to try as I move into the following month, or in this case, the following year. Thank you guys very much for watching, and also, Happy New Year, Happy 2021, and thank God 2020 is over. I cannot wait to see what 2021 has in store for all of us. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.